Juneteenth is a deeply emotional moment for enslaved people because for decades, for, for centuries, enslaved people prayed for, hoped for, fought for in the form of slave rebellions, running away, bought their freedom when they could. And if you read slave narratives, if you listen to spirituals from the era of slavery, you know that enslaved people longed for freedom. This was something that I had been hoped for, but many believe may never come. Being able to go wherever they wanted, being able to wonder about. For enslaved people, it was an expression of their freedom. Well, Matt Porter was the one that, that long missed Porter one of our white folks in the neighborhood. He was coming along, we all sitting on the fence, and the colored children come along and asked her did she want to go with him. And she said, yes, yeah, she might as well one of them horses. She went on with them. I never did see her in his hell of no more. When I think about Juneteenth, I think about it in the context of Emancipation Day celebrations that began January 1, 1863. They took on a whole new meaning when slavery was formally abolished after 1865. You would have had African-American veterans who fought in the Civil War be prominent in these celebrations, dressed in their military garb, speeches from enslaved people, the most prominent black politicians singing of hymns, spirituals, discussions of, of registering to vote. Enslaved people celebrating in public their newfound freedom was an act of resistance. Because we have to remember slavery came to an end after a four years bloody, bloody civil war. Still the, the bloodiest conflict in American history. Many people in the South and in the nation who did not want to see slavery abolished, fought tooth and nail to block the 13th Amendment. The abolition of slavery created a huge humanitarian crisis in the South. Suddenly four million people have very little means to take care of themselves, to support themselves, and do so in a really, really hostile environment. So the military was necessary to make sure that enslaved people got the food, the medicine, the shelter that they needed in order to survive. They're also there to protect, to the extent that that was possible, freed people from violence, from recriminations, from slaveholders, from Confederates who still hadn't given up the fight. And I remember, and the Yankees stopped here, and the Yankees stopped right on the corner of Spire, and the first people knew, we, we go to the ground team, and they take them hanging over the storm. That's the punishment they got. Next time you see, they come a whole troop of Yankees, all riding horses. When the last federal troops leave the South, it's a signal to Southerners. The federal government wasn't going to put its might into ensuring the civil rights of Black people would be observed. You have 20, 30 years later, Black people being lynched in public and there isn't a, a federal anti-lynching law to protect them. In most communities in America, there's a history of lynching and racial violence. And very few communities have marked that, commemorated that. Every decade since 
the end of slavery, black people have been more educated, accrued more wealth, more status in American society. Every decade since 1865. But there's been one constant, and that constant is the presence of random racist violence. What I see in George Floyd's murder was a white police officer attempting to dominate and to subdue a black man who was not resisting, who could not resist. Even though slavery came to an end in 1865, the desire to master and dominate black bodies did not. And we have never dealt with that. These are the kinds of stark realities that are highlighted during Juneteenth. If black people's lives can be expunged through racist violence and no one is held accountable, how free are we? Are we free?